Hello guys. Um, some of you may remember me from the movie Cage, The Groom's Bride. Governor's Gift, The Game, and uh, maybe several other movies I did in the past. And um, I haven't been on any set and I haven't done any movie since 2012. Since I gave my life to Christ, I haven't done any production. And some may say, but we see your movies tied to 2016, 2014 and so on. The truth is that marketers, they rebrand these movies to make money and so they can rebrand it, change the name, add a little bit scene, a different kind of scene here and there and put the movie back out there. Also some movies that uh, one may have, may have done long ago can finally be edited and put out in a recent time. But I haven't been on any movie set since 2012. Since my encounter, I haven't shot any movie. So the reason why I'm doing this uh, video is to basically discuss with you why I left Nollywood, why I'm no longer uh, doing movie for now, especially non-Christian movies. So I was in Ghana at the time. I was shooting several movies. I was writing script. I was doing different things. And at this point, I've been in a hotel for about eight months yeah i've lived in a hotel about eight months basically i had no life but it was a very lonely life and i was in a hotel day and night just writing script go out here and there i eat at the hotel they did my laundry they did everything for me and really i was bored at a point i started having uh, a desire to go out and help the needy I began to ask uh, some of the people on set, some of the producers, like, where can I go to care for the elderly or the homeless, you know, and they would look at me kind of strange, like, what kind of questions are these? We're going to go on set by Monday. We don't have time for you to be caring for no homeless or elderly, you know, so they thought my request was kind of strange. And me, myself, probably they were strange to me. After that, I started having strange dreams, I, but it was unlike any other dream I've ever experienced. They were definitely different kind of dreams. And I started praying. I really didn't understand much. I was religious. I went to church here and there. But pertaining to the spiritual stuff, I don't think I had a lot of understanding. So we shot a lot of movies and I... I started basically desiring to return back to US, to return back to Houston so that I can change my wardrobe. It was a very strong desire. And I started telling the production people that I need to go back to US. Of course, they were against it. They are like, no, by Monday, we need to be on set. We need to start a new production. And, I'm, and I was basically, um, I insisted. I said, I need a new wardrobe. I wanted to wear the latest fashion for the movies and I really wanted to return back to US to do some shopping. So eventually they agreed. So I took off from Ghana, came to Houston and I basically went on a shopping spree. I went to the Galleria, Houston Galleria, West Oaks Mall, anywhere there was more pretty much I was there. I did a lot of shopping because I was thinking of the clothes I would wear in the production, in the movies that we were going, that I was going to return back to shoot. 
so lots and lots of shopping by the time i returned back to my hotel room in houston i had boxes everywhere i had bought jewelries and shoes and dresses and whatever i was in fashion i just had a whole bunch of luggages that i would be flying back to ghana in i bought clothes for the producer i bought things for almost, you know anybody that can come to mind i shop for them and I was so happy and I was so content and I couldn't uh, wait to return back, you know, for the second uh, half of the production. At this point, I think I've shot like four or five movies. You know, I was excited. Then the night before I was to return to Ghana, I woke up uh, at around 1 or 2 a.m. I don't remember the exact time. But basically, I woke up from sleep and my life was leaving my body. I was basically struggling for my life and I started praying but my prayers were empty it was like I was wasting my time I quickly grabbed the phone I called my sister in Nigeria who whom I, I knew she was born again she was the only family member that I knew for sure was born again she was just not she she wasn't just a church goer so I called her and I like, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. She's like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know, but I'm losing my life. Pray for me. So she started praying for me and whatever I was, started calming down. And after she finished praying for me, a lot of other things happened that I would not be able to share. But I heard, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, four, either four or five is enough. Go to your sister. And I didn't know what that meant. It took me a while to realize that I shot about four or five movies in Ghana, you know, and that that's what he meant by it's enough, go to your sister. So the next day I got up, I went to my primary care doctor, I went to Houston Medical uh, Center, I went to have me checked out what's going on with me. And the result came out that I was fine. <laughs> all the blood tests, all the blood works, it's like, you're fine, there's nothing wrong with you. So I was very confused and I stayed back in Houston a little bit longer. I actually missed my flight. I didn't travel that day because of the confusion and all that was going on. I, I just didn't understand. So I, um, I stayed back at night, whatever it was that was. And I will remember the voice that said, four or five is enough. Go to your sister. And I didn't have any intention, by the way, my sister was in Abuja and I was to return back to Ghana. So I had no intention of going to my sister in Abuja. So I just basically, I continued to delay in Houston. The Ghana production crew started calling me, what's going on? You're supposed to be back. Why are you delaying? We need to get on set. And me, myself, my health, everything, I'm, I'm, I don't understand what's happening. I went to... A pastor in Houston I explained to the pastor and he said well go and pray God will speak to you so eventually this thing continued for about two three days in Houston I spoke with one of my uncle at the time he you know I, I eventually left the hotel and went to his house to stay because I couldn't be by myself so my uncle now advised me that look if the voice of the Lord is telling me to go to my sister then it's best I go to my sister now at this point the production in ghana they were calling me and everybody was angry at me and i was basically confused do i go to my sister do i go back on set um eventually i ended up in ghana i didn't go to my sister and i couldn't shoot any movie because i got worse in Ghana, instead of me being on a shooting movie, instead they were taking me from one hospital to another, one doctor to another, and I had medication all over my desk in my hotel room. None of them was working. None of the medication worked. I couldn't shoot movie. I was not myself. So one night, eventually about 3 a.m., I contact the people in Ghana. I said, look, get me to the airport. I need to go to my sister right now. So everybody put everything together. We went to the airport. I flew out, arrived in Abuja, and I met up with my sister. 
and my sister basically like, what's going on i explained to her told her this is the boy Seguru, your sister now i can't explain everything that happened afterward but i will tell you that it was a real transformation within 24 hours i stopped taking any medicine why because everything that was happening to me they started leaving one by one so i was not taking any medicine anymore what i was doing was reading the bible and praying i i basically was engrossed in the word of god and for the first time in my life i understood what i was reading you know before whenever i read the bible within like maybe two minutes i would fall asleep but this time i had understanding i was seeing vision I, so many things the lord was really really speaking to me and within the next basically six months i spent six months in nigeria i was totally transformed i i was reading my bible going to the church with my sister and i had a lot of time to think about my life to apply what the lord was showing me to my life and he really opened my eyes to show me the lifestyle i was living it was gonna take me straight to hellfire the production and all these movies i was doing they were not glorifying his name and i learned so much when i returned back to houston i was a totally different person i changed my phone number my address everything the car that i drove the transformation was day and night everything was different where i lived the car i drove where i went the friends in fact most of the time i was alone i changed my number i didn't want anybody to get in contact with me and everything about my life changed until today i happen to look back the lord has done such a wonderful thing in my life he opened my eye he showed me my life as it is and the fact that i would end up in hellfire if i didn't change and i am so grateful for what God did for me. And this is one of the reasons that I have opened the social media to share my experience with the young, with the old, and to warn the people that hellfire is real and that you need to give your life to Christ. There were so many things that I learned and I'm still learning. One of the lessons I will never forget was the night after i did all my shopping and i had my heart desire and i bought everything i wanted and that night reminded me of the story in the bible the parable of the rich fool when god say your soul is required of you tonight and whom will all these things belong to i had the latest fashion, jewelry, shoe, purse, whatever it is. I had them. I had boxes all over my hotel room. But that night, if I would have died, I would have gone straight to her fire. And whom would all these things would have belonged to? So I have learned that you don't take pride in things. They are just things. Make sure your relationship is right with God. Your soul can be required at any time, at any day. You can be basking in your fame, basking in your wealth, basking in your career, whatever it is you are enjoying right now. Make sure you're prepared for eternity. Make sure that if you die right now, that you will go to heaven. Make sure of that and don't be the rich fool who is so consumed with everything that he had and all the material things that he didn't know that he was going to die that night. Another lesson that I learned is that material things are trash in the face of death. The latest fashion, the latest car, the latest whatever is trash when you are facing death. When you're facing death, the only thing that matters is your family and where you would go to. So at that point, all these, these things that people are dying for and people are selling their soul for, they are useless. In fact, when everything was happening and life was leaving my body, they, I mean, I could care less. 
about the latest shoe, about the latest purse, about, about production. What was most important is my life and if I was to die, where would I go? Would I have gone to heaven? And of course the answer was no. So material possession are nothing in the face of death. Fame, all those things that we take pride in, they are nothing in the face of death. So please understand that you don't exalt material things over spiritual things. Spiritual life, your life with Christ is very important. Material thing, car, house, whatever, fame is trash when you are facing death. Another lesson that I learned is that what you're doing, your profession, your job, whatever it is you're doing, does it glorify God? Is it something God approve of? Is it something that if you die tonight, that God will open his arm and say, welcome, my faithful servant. Do a self-assessment. Assess your life. Are you working at an abortion clinic? Are you one of those who is organizing girls so that your girl will sleep with the girl? Do an assessment of your life. It's what you're doing glorifying God. Because human beings, the world, they can hail you, they can praise you, they can love you. But make sure that God approve of what you're doing. Can Christ praise you for what you are doing right now? If you die tonight, make sure your career choice is approved by God. Another lesson that I learned is that we should know our time of visitation. Know your time of visitation. Jesus wept over Jerusalem and he said that they would suffer because they didn't know their time of visitation. A lot of time the Spirit of God is telling us, leave this stuff, give it up, let it go. This is not right. This is not good for you. Repent of this, repent of that. But we choose to ignore it. And a lot of people would ignore the Spirit of God until they find themselves in hellfire. Thank God I knew my time of visitation. You know, a lot of people would also tell God, God, if you do this for me, then I'll let go, then I'll walk away. If you give me another career uh, option, then I'll leave it. But let me tell you, friends, I didn't have any other career option when I walked away. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life afterward. And the Lord didn't say, if you leave it, I'll give you this. No. After he opened my eye, I just ran for my, for my life. You know, let me tell you, Pressure was coming at that point. Pressure was coming from the set, from this country, from this place, from that place of opportunities to do several movies. The people that I was working with at that time in Africa, pressure was coming. Get back on set, get back in production. But I ran, I walked away from it. So whatever it is that you are holding on tight, don't miss that time of visitation because a lot of people end up in hellfire because they do not know their time of visitation. God gave every one of us a chance, several chances to repent. But you don't know if this is your last chance. So please know your time of visitation. Finally, as you are watching this right now, I want to ask you, what will it profit you to gain the whole world, to gain fame, to gain riches, to gain wealth, to gain position, to gain whatever it is in this world and lose your soul and fry in hellfire and spend eternity away from God and spend eternity suffering? How many years do you have to enjoy? Only what, 70, 80 by 90, 100, you don't even know yourself. Is those years, just short years, are they worth you spending eternity in hellfire because of the fame, because of the money, because of the attention, because of the opportunity? It's not worth it. Nothing is worth your soul being separated from God. So I encourage you, as I ran for my soul, as I walked away, 
so that I can have opportunity to spend the, my eternity with Christ, you do the same thing before it's too late. Walk away.